Welcome to Combat Tech. Weapon systems have almost always relied on kinetic energy to destroy their targets. From arrows and bullets to electromagnetic rail of guns, most velocity of 9,800 feet per second. Military engineers have been designing their weapons to throw an object at very high speeds in, or to destroy other objects. However, new and disruptive battlefield technologies like inexpensive drones and hypersonic have missiles the balance and cost effectiveness of traditional missile defense systems and thus has forced military engineers to investigate an existing yet misunderstood weapon lasers across air, sea, and land. This futuristic weapon is being developed, tested, and even used operationally. Lasers are being weaponized everywhere, from replacing Israel's Iron Dome system to protecting commercial cargo planes away. Early laser weapon systems failed, and what helped them make a comeback? How this technology could save the military over $100,000 every single time it fires on a and target. And how lasers not only can drop drones out of the but sky, but it can also keep them flying with the help of fish. One of the primary lessons learned from the war in Ukraine is the rising importance of unmanned weaponized systems. Drones have completely changed the dynamics of war in the air on land and at sea. They also cost very little DJI Mavic. The drone that has reshaped the war in Ukraine costs around $2,000 a piece. And by attaching explosives, these to them, drones have become an inexpensive way to destroy multi million dollar tanks. There are, of course, existing ways to counter these pesky drones. Classic anti-defense systems rely on precision missile strikes. But launching these weapons can be very expensive. For example, the cheapest of these systems is known as Manpat. They only need one person to and launch. And usually use Stinger missiles, however. One Stinger missile costs an average of $100,000. Oh, not to mention the larger systems in areas where Stingers aren't available, like the Patriot missile, which cost an average staggering $3 million per unit. So, how can militaries fix this pricey symmetry to avoid spending $3 million to take down a $2,000 drone? Engineers have spent the past years inventing solutions to this problem, like anti-drone nets and radio frequency drone blasters, that none have been as practical in addition to military's layer defense system as lasers. The main goal of using laser systems is improving nation's layered or integrated defense strategy. Integrated defense is the use of layered systems of radar, ground, and sea-based missile defense and systems, and fighter jets, with the main goal of deterring traditional targets. Counter-rocket artillery and C-RAM can also address asymmetric aerial attacks. A system with more layers can respond to a higher variety of threats. However, the new low, slow, and small threats like quadcopter can drones can poke a hole in a nation's layered defense system. Cost is an important factor in layered defense systems, and lasers are a powerful solution to this problem. For example, a naval serum unit like this one fires 4,500 rounds per minute. It fires multi-purpose tracer high explosive rounds, each costing around $27. So this burst of 3.43 seconds would cost $6,978. In comparison, that same burst from a 250 kilowatt high energy laser would cost less than 25 cents. As an added bonus, you never have to reload. Lasers also add effectiveness to a layered defense system. They are more precise, require less logistical support, and reduce risk of collateral damage. But where are weaponized lasers being used today? Laser weapon systems are also known as direct energy weapons. Their first ever use was credited to Archimedes all the way back into 12 BC when he used mirrors with an adjustable focal point to redirect sunlight onto invading Raman ships and set them on fire. Lasers reappeared during President Reagan's era with the proposal of the Star Wars program. 
This aimed to use orbiting laser-equipped satellites to intercept Soviet intercontinental ballistic missiles. But the technology wasn't ready at a time, and the plan never took off. More recently, the U.S. Congress has identified direct energy as weapons. technology that could have a significant impact on U.S. national security in the years to come. The U.S., as well as a handful of other nations, including Germany, France, the U.K., Israel, Russia, and China, have been testing these weapon systems for the past yes. and are integrating them into their land, sea, and air capabilities. But how have these systems evolved to what we see today? Early versions of laser weapon systems are known as chemical lasers since they obtained their energy from a chemical reaction. These were some of the most powerful laser systems available, but took up a lot of space. The YAL-1 was one of these systems. Fully operational in 2010, it was a large chemical laser mounted on a nose of a Boeing 7 for 7 capable of taking out missiles with S-beam, however. The system took up the airplane's entire cargo and bay, cost over $2 billion, which is why it was judged impractical and unaffordable, and was discontinued in 2011. Some military and even civilian and cargo planes were fitted with similar, less powerful electric lasers called directed infrared countermeasures. This method uses a laser not to directly destroy an incoming missile, but to confuse its guidance system. By pulsing the laser, the missile loses track of its target, leading it off course. This process requires a pot setup, which is usually mounted under the fuselage. A missile warning system detects the missile, directs a turret with an infrared camera, and once the missile is tracked, the laser fires disrupting the missile. Today, electric lasers have taken center stage thanks to advancements into technology. These systems are far more compact and scalable compared to chemical lasers. In other words, their power output can go much higher without needing their size to increase. And they are called HEL, high energy lasers. On land, these systems are being developed by military contractors like Raytheon for protection against short range aerial threats like rams and also new and dangerous LSS like targets. swarms of drones. These systems are modular and can generate up to 50 kilowatts of power. Melting polymer plastic drones in seconds. At sea, the compact laser weapon systems, or CLAWS, has been fitted onto American naval ships since 2014. Their power output is classified, but is estimated to be anywhere from 50 kilowatts to somewhere in the megawatts. And its range far outshines Raytheon's modular hell. Operating both of these laser systems is incredibly easy to learn using Xbox-like controllers to aim, lock, and fire at targets. Although they cost over five times the price of traditional counter RAM units, the long-term spending on these systems will decrease over time. They may be far more technologically advanced and therefore harder to manufacture, but having much less moving and parts, no physical ammunition means much lower logistical costs and much more accurate shots. But lasers aren't only used to kill drones, they're also used to train them using fish. Fish swim in schools, which are large groups that come together to form a sort of cloud, or you could even call it a swarm here. Lasers are used to track and stimulate to see how fish. a change in behavior in some of them leads to a change in behavior in the whole group. Scientists then measure these changes and create Models AI based on this behavior to train drone swarms to move more like a group of living animals. This allows them to navigate new or unknown areas using only the movement of the larger group and without needing a full knowledge of the area. The fish basically teach drones how to be more independent. But this research is still in early stages. So how do swarm of drones today how know? to navigate autonomously? That answer also lies in lasers. 3D mapping lasers. 3D laser mapping has recently been used to scan entire ships. 
DARPA is using the same tech to scan large buildings and entire urban environments. Two train drone swarms to navigate with the help of machine learning. This program is called Offset. It starts by mapping an area to create a digital version of it. Those 3D LiDAR scans take up to 1 million photos per second, creating a very precise virtual landscape. Human swarm commanders then use headsets VR to view environments and control simulator drones to set and mission plan. Then the drones get to work using a mix of AI, driven swarm tactics, and human command. The offset system shows advanced swarm behavior inspired by nature, like collective decision making, adaptive formation flying, and self healing. Drone operations are limited by how much charge their battery holds, of course. Drones can find their way back to a charging station where they can recharge and are then brought back to the surface to fly again. But thanks to lasers, drones could soon charge up while underway without ever having to return to a charging station. Power beaming consists of a laser shining light for the voltaic receiver that is tuned to the wavelengths of lasers. These receivers can achieve one and two a, two and a two times greater using efficiency. laser light compared to sunlight. Engineers at the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory have been testing this technology since 2017. This project initially started by delivering to submarine drones through optical cables but soon evolved to open-air power transfers. The system was able to deliver over 400 watts and of power doors to a receiver over 1,000 feet away. Although this may not seem like much, proved the system to be safe and scalable. And finally, they were able to do an outside test with that a receiver. was small and light enough to be placed on AUAV. This method of transferring energy without having to move mass is revolutionary. For example, it would reduce the infrastructure needed when setting up forward operation bases as traditional wire and fuel transfer mechanisms would become obsolete. Power beaming is portable, silent and invisible and allows for power transfers to areas that are traditionally inaccessible. These elements make it ideal for military operations. But where would all this power come from? The issue is that light travels in a straight line. So this technology's main limitation is line of sight. But what if that was no longer a problem and we could beam power anywhere on Earth? A new project from the Air Force Research Laboratory called the Space Solar Power Incremental Demonstration and Research Project or SPIDER could do exactly this from orbit? This project aims to use satellites to collect energy from the sun and beam that energy down directly to receivers on Earth. This could further eliminate the need for power infrastructure, making local power generators and fuel convoys obsolete. The cherry on top is that this technology could also be used for civilian infrastructures around the world. But what happens when that beam hits the wrong area? Well, your guess is as good as mine. 